Creating apps is amazing, but is it secure? It's easy to assume it is, especially if you are a newbie, but in reality... Yeah, but don't worry, I got you. In this video, we'll cover 6 security tips that not only make your app safer, but also make your app more scalable. But before we continue, note that if you wanna see meaningful changes, you have to deploy all these tips together. And with that out of our way, let's begin. Restrict your API keys to save your backend. An extra layer of security is that we want to prevent users from making any calls even if they somehow get access to our API keys. How? If you are using Firebase and Google Cloud, just open up your Firebase project and to open the Google Cloud project behind it, we just click on panel view and select key visualizer. It's just to open Google Cloud and make sure you are the owner of this project. On Google Cloud's panel, you want to go to APIs and Services and then Credentials. Over here, we can see that Firebase has created three keys. For now, we want to work with the browser key. How do we restrict it? We want to restrict it by the domain. So only calls coming from this website can make it to our servers. Select website and put your domain. So it would be something like appname.floodaflow.com or any other domains that your app is deployed on. And then for this key and the two others, so the Android one and the iOS one, we wanna restrict the access level of all API keys. Probably we won't need BigQuery stuff, so we will disable all of it. We don't need AutoML API, Dataplex, or any of these weird ones, but be careful based on your project. Make sure you are not actually using these. And yeah, that's it. Click save and you are a lot more secure. On to our next tip. Skip phone authentication unless you need it. Phone authentication sounds secure, right? Nope. Fake numbers, temporary SIMs, and SMS costs make it a headache unless it's critical for your product. You can easily get hit by one of those spams that request 10,000 SMS codes in 2 minutes. And the scary part is that you are paying for all of them. Either don't use phone authentication or if you do, follow this. Go to your Firebase project and open authentication then settings. On settings, we can see we have a new option called recapture for fraud prevention. This is exactly to prevent that 10,000 requests in two minutes case. So enable recapture and then limit SMS region policy. So we disable SMS on regions that we are not active in, like in those small nations. But remember, some of those nations have the plus one country code. So if you add them, the USA will be blocked too, which we don't want to do. Or do we? On to our next tip. It's called app check. App check makes sure that all coming requests are coming from the app itself. So if they have our API key, they won't be able to make a call. We are kind of outsourcing all of this to Google. So it's pretty secure. But remember this before enabling app check, make sure you separate development and production environment. Because after you enable app check, it will be a real pain to work on the development side. This comes from real experience. So after that, just go to Firebase and scroll down a bit and enable app check. And then go through Floodflow's own documentation. It's pretty great, pretty extensive. So I won't make this video too long. After it's enabled, make sure you come over to this page on Firebase and enforce the rules on Cloud Firestore and the other APIs you might want to use. Next up is watch out for fake email accounts. Email authentication is great, but it's better not to use it because anyone can sign up with a disposable email and spam your app to get as much free credit as possible. This is way too common. You've got 12 Gmail accounts to dodge paying for any development tool. And if you have to use it, the least you can do is to enable email validation and also blog some known disposable email domains on Floodflow site. You can find those domains on the Google. On to our next tip. Lock down critical data with a separate user settings collection. Let's talk about a naive mistake. Storing sensitive data like subscription tier in the main collection. Why? 
because users can easily edit them and they have the right to do so by just going to the inspect menu and taking a look to the network tab so first of all remove any flags that you might have on users collection that's going to affect your app's functionality like is premium or the user's access level or their credit and then create a new collection name it user settings this collection is gonna have a user reference and the fields we need for the app functionality like is premium and credit and a sub point is to store credits as integer on your database because you are gonna have a lot of problems with doubles and just divide it by 100 on your front end and then head to the settings section and we want to close down user settings as much as possible mm -hmm. so no one can write it delete it or even create it only the tagged user so user reference can read it and then the next step would be to create a small cloud function you can just prompt ChatGPT to do it. Watch a 20 minute tutorial on Firebase Cloud Functions and we are going to have one in the future. Remember to subscribe the channel and also like this video. So for example, on this cloud function, we need to check the payment with Stripe and then update user settings with the admin SDK. Over here, because we are using the admin SDK, there are no limitations on what we do with the Firestore database. So up until now, our app is a lot more secure. If they get access to our web API key, they won't be able to make a call because it's restricted to our domain name. If they get the API key for our apps, so the Android and iOS app, they won't be able to make any calls because of app check. And then even if they somehow get around all of these, we have the secure user settings collection that nobody can access. But we shouldn't skip server-side logic. Just because it's easier to do it on Flutterflow side with less restrict security rules doesn't mean you have to do it. And just use something like Cloud or ChatGPT or Cursor to create your Firebase Cloud functions. This way you avoid building your app again and again as you get more users and deal with bigger problems. So Flutterflow and Firebase are powerful but only if you secure them right. These tips will help you keep your app and yourself safe. If you are interested in more projects and exclusive content, join our Patreon community and also subscribe to our second channel where we do more tutorials and deep dive videos. See you in the next one.